Hi everyone, I'm Xiao Junong from UC Riverside. Today I'm going to talk about our recent work on parallel single source shortage paths. This work is done by Yan Gu, Yi Han Sun, Yu Min Zhang, and me. First of all, I will start with some general background. In this talk, I will focus on the shared memory setting. For all theoretical analysis, we use work span model. Great work means the total number of operations, and span means longest dependence chain. This talk covers both theoretical analysis and experimental results. This work is about parallel single source shortest paths. Sequentially, we can either use Dijkstra or Bellman form. These two textbook algorithms are both very simple and practical. Dijkstra uses a priority queue and processes each vertex exactly once. So it's work efficient, but it's inherently sequential. For Bellman fold, the parallelism is straightforward, but it may exit each vertex multiple times, which leads to redundant work. As mentioned, SSSP is notoriously hard in parallel. So let me first overview the literature. Existing research studied this problem mainly from three different directions. First of all, there are many of theoretically efficient algorithms aiming to provide worst case work and spam bumps. Practically, we have a lot of implementations based on an algorithm called delta stepping. I will talk about some details later. There has also been work focusing on designing a priority queue for parallel dijkstra. Actually, each of them solves the problem from a different angle, but there are also challenges for each category, respectively. Let's first zoom in at the practical algorithm delta stepping. Know that the numbers on the graph is tentative distances. In a high level, this algorithm processes all vertices in steps. In every step, it tries to settle all vertices within a distance range of delta. In each range, we relax all vertices in parallel using Bellman form until we don't have new distance settled. Then we move to the next one. So it processes all vertices with distance delta, two delta, three delta consecutively. This algorithm is like a hybrid of Dijkstra and Bellman form. Across ranges, it uses Dijkstra style to reduce redundant work. Inside a range, it wants parallel Bellman for X sub steps, so we can support parallelism. In practice, delta stepping has pretty good performance, but there are still some additional challenges. In theory, there's no known good work and spam bumps for delta stepping on general graphs. In practice, one of the questions is how to select the back parameter of delta. In fact, we tested four delta stepping algorithms, three state of the art and one hour. We want delta stepping using different values of delta on four graphs. Here, each figure is a graph, each curve is a graph implementation combination. We normalize them to the fastest running time of all delta. So the smallest value of each curve is always one, marked with the red stars. We have several interesting findings. Let's first look at the same graph and compare the red stars for each curve. Although they all implement delta stepping, the back delta can vary a lot. We can also compare the back delta for the same implementation. We can see that the back delta again varies a lot. Here I show the back delta for one implementation, gap bx. Although the first three graphs have the same edge rate distribution, the back delta can still be very different. If we look at some graph implementation pairs, the performance is very sensitive to the value of delta. Many of them show a sharp corner at the best choice of delta. As a result, in practice, we have to first preprocess to find the best delta for each graph implementation combination. That is the challenge we face in practical solutions. If we zoom in at the theoretically efficient algorithms, it's also very challenging. Because parallel SSSP is one of the problems that is hypothesized to suffer from the transitive closer bottleneck, no known solution can achieve low spread and spam simultaneously. Low span is especially hard, just consider a chain. So many theoretically efficient algorithms need to add shortcut edges. Unfortunately, this is also hard. 
Theoretically, we need many shock up edges to reduce band. But adding these shock ups increases the number of edges. So we have more work. And in practice, it's very hard to even store these shock up edges in a single machine. Due to all these reasons, these algorithms are not very practical. Finally, there is a lot of work focusing on directly parallelizing priority queues in Dijkstra, so the algorithm can be conceptually simple. The core of this algorithm is a parallel or concurrent priority queue for Dijkstra's algorithm. However, it's slow in practice because Dijkstra's algorithm itself is inherently sequential and it seems unlikely to achieve sublinear span bumps. As we can see, the three directions has advantages but also have some challenges. Ideally, we want to achieve a combination of all of them. Theoretically, we want some worst case bombs that match or close to periodic bombs. Especially, we want to avoid shortcuts but still have some interesting bombs. Practically, we want to make it competitive or faster than existing systems and have parameter insensitive performance. Also, we want to design a good abstraction for the priority queue such that it makes both the analysis and implementation simple. That sounds pretty ambitious, but we show that very simple ideas give a very good solution. So I will then talk about our approach. Our idea has three key components. The first one is a new algorithm framework called Stepping Algorithm Framework. It extracts some common idea in previous algorithms. The second is a new ADT called Lazy Batch Priority Queue. We call it Lab PQ for short to abstract the need of a priority queue in the stepping algorithms. Then, based on this framework, we propose two new algorithms row stepping and delta star stepping. The idea of each of them is very simple, but surprisingly, when we put everything together, we get very good results. First of all, we show that many existing algorithms fall into this framework, including Dijkstra, Bellman Ford, Delta Stepping, and Radius Stepping, which is a pretty theoretically efficient algorithm. Of course, our new algorithms, Rule Stepping and Delta Star Stepping, also fall into this framework. Then we show two data structures for lab PQ, one based on tournament tree, the other based on arrays. Using tournament tree based implementation, we achieve new bumps. Using array-based implementation, we achieve practical and efficient implementation, which outperforms existing systems. I first talk about stepping algorithm framework. We try to abstract some common ideas in these existing algorithms and call them stepping algorithms. Just like delta stepping, these algorithms run in steps. In each step, a subset of unsettled vertices with distances under a certain threshold are extracted, and we, we use them to relax their neighbors, repeat it until all vertices are settled. This is a simple pseudocode of the stepping algorithm. We use this small delta to denote the tentative distances. We use a lazy batch priority queue called Q here to maintain the distances. In each step, we first compute a threshold and then extract all vertices within this threshold from Q. Then in parallel, we relax all their neighbors using a priority white. If succeed, we update the distance of the neighbors in Q. Finally, before we go to the next step, we use a finish check to make sure if we need to run more sub-steps or not. This is needed for some algorithms like delta stepping. Actually, the stepping algorithms differ only in how they select the threshold and how they do the finish check. For example, Dijkstra just uses the smallest unsettled distance as the threshold. Bellman 4 uses infinity to process all vertices. For video stepping, it's more complicated. It changes the threshold dynamically based on the current status. Delta stepping uses a fixed value of i delta for step i and continue the sub-step until all unsettled vertices in the range are settled. And we have two new algorithms. Delta star stepping is our new variant of delta stepping by removing the finished chat. We can avoid sub-steps and make it efficient both in theory and practice. 
Road stepping simply uses the road process distance, so the idea is pretty simple. Our two new algorithms achieve both new theoretically bombs and efficient implementations. If we look at the algorithm framework, the only missing part is how to implement the lazy batch priority queue and these two functions. Let's move on to our ADT and data structure. Our data structure, the lazy batch priority queue, is inspired by some recent work about batch dynamic data structures. Intuitively, batch dynamic data structure means that the data structure accept batches of modifications or queries in parallel. What we need in the stepping algorithm framework seems to be two operations. The first one is to update a key, either insert or update if it's already in the data structure. The other is to each chat all vertices with keys below a certain threshold, output and delete them. Which are these two functions here? The function update, which is executed asynchronously, means to commit an update to the data structure. Each chat means to report all elements smaller than a threshold and delete them. An important observation is that this update doesn't need to be executed immediately. Before the next each chat, delaying these updates don't make any difference to the data structure because no one reads any value from it. So we don't need to execute them immediately. Instead, we can do it lazily. We can use this update just to mod the vertices as modify. A later extract function before it actually extracts anything is responsible for applying all previous changes as a batch update. Importantly, our setting is also slightly different from the previous batch dynamic data structures because of the laziness. We don't need to generate this batch explicitly. For time limit, I will just show our tournament tree based abstraction. Using arrays is actually straightforward. A tournament tree is an implementation of priority queue. It's a complete binary tree with all data stored in the external nodes or leaves. Each internal node records the smaller values of the, its two children. So it looks like a tournament. To update a key, we directly update it in the leaf and try to mod all its ancestors in the tree because they might be updated. If there are multiple mock leaves, the paths will overlap. We use a bit for each internal node to indicate if anything in its subtree is modified. All the concurrent update operations try to set this bit using the atomic operation text and set. Only when a flag successfully text and set the bit of its parent, it goes up to update the next ancestor. Otherwise, it means that someone else has set this bit from here all the way up to the root, and this flag can stop. It prevents any node to be visited by more than once. Later, we can apply the entire batch of modifications from the root in using a divide and conquer algorithm. We can skip a subtree if it's not marked. Otherwise, we deal with two subtrees in parallel. Set the new value and remove the mark. To extract everything smaller than a threshold, we also use the keys in the internal nodes. We skip the subtree with key larger than the threshold. Otherwise, we deal with the two subtrees in parallel. In this case, we can guarantee that if we have B leaves involved in a batch, in total, we only need to visit big O B log N over B tree nodes. H is basically a constant number of times. That simple data structure helps us achieve many new bumps in this paper. However, as mentioned, it looks hard to achieve some linear span bump for general graphs if we don't want to use shortcuts. But we know that tighter bumps may be expected based on some graph invariants. For example, we know that the span bound for Bellman Ford is tilde O of n, but a more precise way to say it is tilde O of d, where d is the shortest path chief depth. Our idea is to use the Cairo graph proposed in the radius stepping paper. A graph is a Cairo graph if each vertex can reach its row closest vertices in k hops. It generally states how much progress we can make by looking at k steps. For example, if we have a graph like this, assume each edge is a unit weight, then this graph is 1 3 graph, because each vertex can reach the 3 closest vertices in one hop. However, if we want to reach 
four closest vertices. Some of them may need to go out two hops, so it is a two-four graph. Actually, it's also a two-six graph, because by going out two hops, I will reach six closest vertices, but not seven. For fixed rule, we use k rule as the smallest k that makes this graph a k rule graph. So for this graph, k3 is 1, k4 is 2, k6 is also 2. Also, we can see that kn is just the shortest path to depth. Then the question is, what is the k rule properties of real real graphs? We text it on seven real real graphs. We found that for scale-free social and web networks, the growth of k rule is extremely slow. You can assume it is order of log n even for large rule. For rule networks, then k rule goes fast and the shortest path chip is steep. So it is too pessimistic to always assume the worst case that the input graph is a chain, since the real real graph is not always the works. And graphs with different k rule properties should have different behavior in the stepping algorithms. By using the concept of k rule graph, we can show a variety of improved bumps marked in the web box. I would like to mention, due to the similarities of the stepping algorithms, the analysis of all these algorithms are pretty similar. They share the same lemmas. We also analyze the costs using array-based lab PQ since we use them in our implementations. Although our goal is not to beat the bumps of Tolman cheese, many of these bumps are still non-trivial. If we compare our row stepping with radius stepping, one of the existing theoretically efficient algorithms, the span bound on the unrated graph is improved, and the work is slightly works, but it applies to directed graphs. Let me introduce some implementation details. We also implement the algorithms in our stepping algorithm framework with almost the same code and just substitute different tracks whole. An important thing is that in practice, we just use a simple array-based data structure to implement the lab PQ because it's cache-friendly and easy to implement. We test the running time of each chatting row out of 10 to the 8 elements by using telemetry and array. It shows if we use a large row using an array, it's faster than using a tolerant tree. We use sparse dense optimization. It's inspired by LIGRA. Basically, when the frontier is small, we use an array to keep track of the vertices. And when it's large, we use Boolean flags to indicate if the vertices are in the frontier. We also use the bucket fusion optimization in our implementations. It's motivated by graphite. If the reward is not sufficient in one step, instead of exploring one hop neighbors, we explore multiple hop neighbors. This can reduce synchronization cost, so it's critical for large diameter graphs. Finally, I want to talk about some interesting results in experiments. We use a single parallel machine with 96 cogs, so there are 192 hybrid threads. All our implementations are written in C++. We test T7 graphs, 5 social and web graphs. We call them scale-free networks because they share many similarities, and 2 row graphs. The graphs are generally large, but the sizes of them still vary a lot. We set uniformly distributed edge weight within 2 to the 18 on the scale-free networks, and for row networks, the distance are from the original data set. We test 7 implementations, 4 delta stepping algorithms including our own delta star stepping two Bellman 4 implementations, including our own version, and our rule stepping algorithm. We first show an overall heat map of parallel running time. Each row is an implementation. Each column is a graph. All running times are normalized to the max running time on the graph. We categorize them to scale-free networks and row networks. Note that PQ delta here means our delta star stepping algorithm. For all delta stepping implementation, we use the backs delta. For row stepping, we report PQ row fix as the running time using, of using a fixed value of row, and PQ row backs using the backs row. We can see our implementations are much faster than the previously highly optimized graph processing systems for all graphs. On scale-free networks, our row stepping is always the fastest. It's at least 40% faster than all existing implementations. 
Our delta stepping is also good on average. On row networks, our delta stepping achieved the best performance. Row stepping is slightly worse, but competitive to existing implementations. To understand different stepping algorithms, we count the average number of visits per vertex. In this figure, lower is better. This is a good indicator of these algorithms. Since parallel shortest paths are IO bottleneck, so how many vertex visits basically tells the total work performed. Ideally, we want to make it one, just like Dijkstra. But because of parallelism, we have to tolerate some overhead. We only compare our three implementations because the previous implementations involve many details, and it's hard to get the numbers from their code. A fun fact is that Bellman Ford is already very close to optimal on scale-free networks, which is about 2.5 receipts per vertex. Numbers for row stepping is very close to one for the large scale-free networks, meaning that there's little we can improve. However, on row graphs, there still seems to be room for improvement. In this case, delta stepping has much lower bar here. This is consistent with our parallel running time. To further understand this, we also draw the number of vertices visited in each step in these three stepping algorithms. We can clearly see that on scale-free networks, row stepping visits a very stable number of vertices, so it distributes work more evenly to each step than the other two algorithms. The goal of row stepping is to make work sufficient to saturate the processes but little redundant work. In this case, controlling a shattered number of vertices in each step is a good way to achieve work parallelism trade-off. But on row graphs, the strategy of row stepping looks too eager, especially in the early stages. This leads to redundancy, and delta stepping is actually much better. We believe this is because of the graphs are slim and deep, so in early stages we don't have enough, enough work to saturate all processes. But row stepping will be aggressive to, to perform more work. Also, there are almost planar graphs using Euclidean distances. So it makes exploring based on di the distance a very good strategy. Like delta stepping, we also change the parameter of row in our implementation. The top figures are for delta stepping I show at the beginning of this talk. And the bottom one is for row stepping. We can see the relative running time is more stable when row changes. We provide more experimental results in the full version of this paper. Let me summarize our work. This work uses a stepping algorithm framework and an ADT lazy batch priority queue and proposes two new algorithms, row stepping and delta star stepping. By using Tolman tree based lab PQ, we achieve new or improved bumps. And by using array based lab PQ, we have efficient implementations that are faster than the state of the art systems. Our two algorithms, row stepping and delta star stepping, are very simple on top of our lab PQ interface. They are also fast in practice. Row stepping achieves the theoretical guarantee that is similar to radius stepping. It's insensitive to the value of row and especially good on scale-free networks. Delta star stepping achieves non-trivial theoretically results on delta stepping style algorithms. It's especially good on row networks. That's it for my talk. For more details, you can refer to the full version of this paper and our code, or send me an email.